This is a great orc. We have a skeleton of this in the museum. A previous director sat down with me, saw these numbers, and thought, why is there no online database of all the great orc skins, skeletons, and eggs in the world? We could do one in Whanganui. And we both sat and thought about that, and we pictured this database and the logo that we would design for it and all the different things it could do, all the pictures, all the content it could have. And the project there in our heads grew and grew. It became more and more massive. But it would be our project in Whanganui. We would have the great Orc database. Heaven knows why. So I want to talk <laughs> about these sorts of branded projects that can occur when you're not um, paying attention, and how I now think about them differently from having edited Wikipedia for some time. Uh, I'm not giant flightless birds on Wikipedia. I do a reasonable amount of work there, and I'm a constant proselytizer at NDF for the value of it in glam institutions. And a typical project would be the Critter of the Week project I do with a radio host and a doc officer trying to create or enhance a Wikipedia page for each new endangered species they talk about each week. And this has grown and grown and to incorporate other volunteers, some of them in this audience, uh, until it's become actually quite a useful resource that doc itself now refers to if they want to get information. So I had some experience with small Wikipedia projects, but Massive branded projects are the ones I want to talk about. What are MBPs? They, uh, they almost always have a pretty logo of some kind. They are usually a large, complex, multi-person, interdisciplinary, um, multiple institution project with a significant budget and it's taken a certain amount of time. They're usually independent, proprietary, and are branded with the institutions that came up with them. Um, what are some characteristics of massive branded projects? They're usually pretty good. So a lot of work has gone into them. They're usually well-funded, well-designed, well-thought-out. They are generally an excellent resource. However, there are some downsides. They're slow. It takes a long time to start one. It takes a long time to change direction if you're even able to. And if there are problems or omissions or errors, they can take a long time to update. They are expensive. They're expensive in dollars and expensive in time, and they are never, ever fed. They are always hungry. They're hungry for your staff. They're hungry for your budget. Um, and unfortunately, most of them seem to be doomed. So either they, they're one of two ignominious fates will often occur to them. They will either quietly shrivel away like a raisin, or they will become a zombie, which is a site that looks like it is alive, but if you get too close to it, it eats your brain. <laughs> so there, from looking at uh, a lot of massive branded projects, I've come up with three humble suggestions that I think we could think about in the glam sector. These are just my opinions, and if you, of course, if you don't like them, I have others. Uh, <laughs> We could think about starting small rather than big. Here's an example of a massive branded project that didn't. The New Zealand Organism Register was an ambitious attempt to come up with a perfect list of all the species of, that occur in New Zealand, as well as their common names, Māori names, old obsolete names, the literature, and ways that it could be used by multiple different institutions. So the, this was first mooted in 2000. The concept was developed with a large team for six years. Another four years later, they got $944,000 to spend three years building this and entered 145,000 species names. Not all of them valid, as we'll see. Um, and then they ran out of money, and the funding has stopped. So it, the site is now alive, technically. If you lean too close, you can hear it shut brains. Uh, <laughs> It's sitting there on land care. There's no money. There's no funding for any ongoing support, maintenance, or correction. Even though in the interim, species have arrived in New Zealand, taxonomy has changed. It needs constant updating. So this is a good example. Um, now, compare that with a similar example in the public sphere, which is wiki species. Started off entirely by volunteers, 494,000 species listed, uh, doing almost the same job, no, not a cent of taxpayer money. The second suggestion is to embrace the idea of open editing. Let's go back to the New Zealand Organism Register. 
I search for my species, Dinornis, of the giant moa. Uh, it's the most obvious thing for me to search. Straight away, I type that in. And we come up with six species, one genus. But I look closer at that and I see, wait a minute, two of those species names we haven't, are obsolete. We haven't used them for 10 years. Those species don't exist. Two others are errors caused by capitalization problems, but have been entered as a separate um, item in the database. Um, so there's big problems here that won't be fixed. If we go to wiki species, we find that, in fact, that's, there's just two species, two correct ones listed. All the references are nice and neat. All the synonyms are listed. It's all been done by volunteers um, with a, that didn't cost the New Zealand public assent. Why aren't we using wiki species? Well, apparently it doesn't provide structured data to deliver the specific range of digital services required by our end users. So it's actually a data structure problem, not a content problem. And yet NZOR created all this content fresh, reinventing the wheel. Notice, by the way, the typo in the heading there, which sat there for about three years and took three months for them to change when I noted it. If, of course, it had been an open project, I would have been able to go in and fix it myself. <laughs> so yes, we build on open resources, the New Zealand Birds Online database. Again, a clone of parts of Wikipedia, um, a collaborative project with several institutions. It's really good. It has things like a bird song library, it has access to copyrighted sections from copyrighted books, which you'd never be able to do any other way. It has a lovely photo archive, but you'll see, what's the copyright on that photo? Philip Griffin by Philip Griffin, Philip Griffin. So there's something wrong here. Here's their library of 48 TUI photographs, all, comp all selected by volunteers and donated to them. What's the user usable early status of those? Well, once two are copyrighted, and we have an email address, two are many are copyrighted, all we know is the author name, and some, we just have a URL. Two of those are 404s. Some shouldn't even be copyrighted. Doc doesn't release things under this license anymore. So lots of problems. Finally, we should consider launching, make the start, not the end. Here's a traditional GLAM project. I'm sure you're all familiar with this. A good idea, active, active excitement, desperation and panic leading up to deadline, collapse, <laughs> after which no change happens until the end of the project. Wikipedia projects tend to occur in more healthy ways, questioning, activity, 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 and a constant churn that gradually improves it without that desperation and collapse. So in conclusion, uh, my opinion is that big branded projects are great, but they have some downfall, uh, some flaws. We should consider starting small, using open resources, and treating the launch as a starting point. Thank you.